All right. So hello, everyone. We will be covering sprints 70 and 71 today. Um, here are our teams and the current focus. No major changes here. There are a couple of new team members I wanted to introduce before we get into it. Uh, let me see where I can find them here. Lots of teams are unchanged, but I know I saw some. Oh, here. Okay, I'm fully jet. Maria Aloshina is a front-end developer new today. So welcome, Maria. Thank you. <laughs> and then there's one more I saw here. Uh, Roman, a Java developer on Vega. Welcome to you, Roman, as Thank well. Thank you. <laughs> and I think those were all the new developers. Yes. All right. So that's... Those are the teams, and um, with that, I'm going to actually turn it right over to Jakob to talk about the DAISY release. Thank you, Kate. So just a summary of the, the release plan for DAISY, uh, uh, also known as Q3.2. Uh, the modular release deadline is tomorrow, September 11th, um, uh, and we hope to see all modules uh, see their initial releases uh, by uh, midnight midnight uh, GMT. So uh, for those who are still uh, working on those releases, please make sure that they're they're done on time. Uh, last time we checked, there's still quite a few releases um, uh, missing. Uh, then uh, the plan is to do a release testing the following week. So. September 16th uh, to 20th, uh, uh, the bugs will be uh, raised uh, for any any, uh, any any defects discovered, and they will be triaged by the uh, release bug triage uh, team. Um, uh, then any uh, bug fix releases uh, that address those issues and any other P1s uh, raised uh, and P2s if time allows uh, uh, will be out by the September 25th or that the, or that's the plan at least for now. Uh, uh, so please make sure to to uh, to uh, to keep the modules uh, released within that deadline because uh, right after the uh, the releases uh, will uh, rebuild the environments uh, to confirm that issues are fixed. And uh, if all goes well, they Daisy will uh, become public on September 30th, uh, so last day of the month. So that's the plan for Daisy. Uh, Kate, could you scroll? Thank you. Um, and Elder, 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 Elder Flower release plan is uh, as follows. I think I mentioned that on, uh, during the last sprint review, but uh, uh, it doesn't harm to repeat it. December 4th is the rele module release deadline, uh, uh, followed by a uh, manual release testing, uh, so-called backfast, um, the following week, uh, December 9th to 13th. And then bug fix release deadline is on December 8th. Uh, and if all goes well, we'll see Elder, Elder Flower Q4 release uh, uh, for general uh, public view on December 20th. So just in time for Christmas. Uh, cool. Thank you. Can we scroll to the next slide? Uh, sure. Uh, definition of done updates. Uh, this has been uh, uh, mentioned during the sprint review, but we did not have all the documentation in place at that point. Now all the documentation is in place. Uh, so uh, the schema changes should include automatic schema, schema and data migrations uh, for any new uh, features, any new schema changes. Uh, uh, there is uh, for modules that use RMB, so that use the, the, the RAML module builder uh, framework. Uh, there is a uh, documentation available at the first link, and there has been all, also uh, a uh, tutorial uh, prepared by Taras uh, Spostyanko for a um, uh, for uh, for a migration that illustrates uh, the whole process, so to say, and uh, and approach for providing those those data database migrations and that's available at the second link. Um, we would also like to see new APIs documented according to the documentation guidelines uh, available at the, uh, the, the following URL uh, and the PR requests uh, should be reviewed according to the new PR review checklist uh, that's been um, 
uh, that's been uh, prepared and agreed on by the Tech Leads uh, group. And uh, that checklist has been published uh, on uh, devfolio.org as well. That's the first link. And there's also some summary of the, uh, the development process, um, uh, the, the second link. Uh, so please make yourself familiar with this if you haven't uh, done so far. Uh, there's some 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 useful documentation there. Do you want me to open any of those links, Jakob? Or I don't think we'll have the time. But uh, if uh, uh, if there are any questions, please send them directly to me or specifically for the PR preview, uh, the PR review checklist. Uh, 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 you can ask them on the tech leads channel if you're a tech lead, or just you know directly ping me if you have any questions about that. Okay, I think we can right. move on. Okay. Okay. Oh, now we're All on right. to the sprint highlights. Okay, cool. I, and I think that's me as well. <laughs> so I'll just I'll just run uh, through the core platform highlights. So uh, we have the RMB twenty seven uh, release initial released out uh, sometime last week. Uh, I think the, the 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 feature that is worth mentioning is the the, the feature to build. Um, uh, compounds uh, or, or multi field multi multi field indices in RMB uh, so f and this is spanning multiple JSON uh, properties uh, which is also uh, the same feature that allows uh, creating virtual indices that uh, are based on a custom SQL expression that the developer can provide so this is a feature that we we hope it's going to address some uh, the deficiencies and in, in, in how the searching is um, supported in Folio. Uh, and most of the, the other tasks are DevOps related. So the, uh, the, the CI integrated continuous deployment uh, uh, work uh, that's been ongoing for the last couple of uh, quarters is uh, is getting to the point where it's complete. There's been an initial rollout of the PR preview functionality. There's a link there for those who'd like to take a look at it. Uh, and uh, in the coming sprints, we'll be wrapping that up and rolling that out across Folio. And there's well, there will be some more discussion, some presentation, I believe, on the uh, on the. The, the PO meeting uh, because that functionality is um, uh, supposed to help with uh, uh, with how the uh, the, 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 the feature reviews are being done um, and uh, will allow us to do them before code is merged to master which has been um, has been a, a feature long awaited by uh, by the development teams yeah and, awesome yeah yeah so we're lo really looking forward to have this rolled out and UX Pro 1815 and uh, that's something I have mentioned so uh, that's the uh, the, the support for upgrading must that for Taras has been doing a lot of work and he's produced some additional documentation for the process so that's the that's the document mentioned um, mentioned before and I think that's it I don't know if the next slide is also me Could you... oh yeah it is oh yeah but I don't know if whether we want to do this uh, we usually skip the highlights for the for the sake of time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I think since Core Platform doesn't do demos, if you have anything specific you want to talk about here, um, sure. go for it. Otherwise, we can just skip ahead. So uh, I think I'll just point anybody who's interested to the new functionality I mentioned, uh, the multi-field, uh, the compound index and custom index support in RMB. Uh, here's a short example. Uh, more is available in the and the RMB documentation, which is the first link uh, that you see on the slide. Uh, uh, so uh, this is an example for a uh, particular um, uh, use case we have in, uh, in users. Uh, not quite complete, because I think the user has, uh, has, uh, has gotten more complex, but it's an example of an index that spans uh, three fields. So the index name is full name, could be called whatever. Uh, and it spans uh, three JSON fields. That's the first name, last name, and username in that order. Uh, and uh, uh, this allows us to build a database index so, uh, so we can ensure that the, the searching and sorting is done efficiently um, and it's done on a single property. So it avoids certain um, limitations of, uh, uh, of not having a fixed index that spans those properties. And, 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 and in which case the UI has to uh, perform uh, a series of workarounds to allow searching on all those fields at the same time. Uh, so an example, uh, 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 this particular example could, uh, uh, we, we do have a workaround for that, I should, I should say in the UI. Uh, so this, 
uh, would uh, result in a an simplified and potentially uh, better performing query. So that's an example of it. So full name join Smith, uh, Johnny, for example. Um, uh, we do support this in the UI, but, uh, but it, we do it through the workaround. Uh, what we don't support and what this functionality could address directly is uh, keyword slash all search and inventory. Uh, so uh, uh, in that case, we don't have a workaround because the query is too complex for a workaround. Uh, and that functionality will be directly utilized to uh, to help with those kinds of searches. And and we'll be looking at implementing uh, the specific functionality in the in the coming weeks uh, in this particular for this particular case. But the I know Charlotte has some stories that are waiting for this, so I'm sure yeah. she's happy. Yeah, um, yeah, I think I think we'll we'll see uh, we'll see uh, quite a few cases where where this is uh, this is useful. Yep. So I think mm -hmm. that's that's the that's the biggest highlights. Yep. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Jakob. <clears throat> Thank you. All right, and all the other teams also have their highlights here, um, but since most of the teams are going to do demos and we want to save time for that, I'm just going to skip these. Um, and that will bring us eventually here to the demos. I wonder if I should take a look at the chat though, because there've been a bunch of things coming. No, in. no, no, no. <laughs> okay. We're just we're goofing off and. Okay. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> uh, how do I get to the next? There we go. Okay. Um, now to the demos. So first up is Dimitro from Vega. Oh uh, yep. Hello, everyone. Hello. Uh, let me share my screen. Uh, can you see it? Yes. Uh, great. Um, first, I'll start with introduction. Um, uh, I'm going to demonstrate the function, the functionality of um, updates in fun in pattern notices functionality. Uh, the first uh, part is multiple item notices. Uh, the idea here uh, for Patron uh, to receive a single email notice instead of multiple notices in uh, several cases. Uh, for example, um, there are notices that are based uh, on time, for example, a reminder or courtesy notices. Um, and it would be better better for patron to receive uh, a single notice, for example, when uh, the due date for several of his um, uh, items is nearing. Uh, in the one case, and that is what I am going to show today, um, the other case is uh, checking out several items uh, to the patron and for him to receive uh, a single uh, checkout receipt. It's what what is under development. So let me uh, start with the configuration. Uh, I'll create a template for courtesy notice. Uh, let it be here and um, also I'd like to introduce changes in um, uh, template uh, UI. Uh, now it, it is possible to add, add um, loops. Let me show how it, how it works. For example, I expect um, um, a user uh, to receive um, uh, several um, items, uh, several items should be listed here. Uh, so let me show it again. Uh, I set like multiple loans and select what I, uh, what data I want to use here. Um, I can also add uh, something about item here. A little bit title and. Um, all contributors. Now let's add something before and something after. And let's quite customize it. A title by contributors and a due date. 
Well, let's save it. And then I will go to pattern notice policy and set up um, the, no the courtesy notice. It will be a loan due date uh, event trigger uh, sent before uh, some time. So actually, um, I'll stop here to tell uh, that um, this, uh, the system checks um, uh, notices for 24 hours for that, um, um, not for 22 hours, but um, that uh, should should have been sent uh, the day um, before. It's necessary to um, uh, to be able to group them when the some uh, date is is passed. Uh, then we are able uh, to group these notices in one note. Uh, group these uh, events in one notice. Uh, it would be too long to wait until uh, midnight, so I'll stop something like send notice 10 months before, let it be 10 months before. Um, to be sure, uh, uh, it isn't bust. So, um, let's check some, something out. Um, so um, the notice should uh, come in uh, something like two minutes. Uh, then I, uh, while I'm waiting for this notice to appear, I'll uh, get to the second part of the demo and then get back to show uh, the notice. So actually the second part uh, is uh, FIFA notices. Um, it's just for user to receive uh, a notification when something happens uh, with fee fines or it's, he gets charged. Well, let me show the setup here. Uh, I have uh, several templates uh, for fee fine charge. It's when charge created. Uh, here I have just a sentence with some placeholders and all mm, uh, available for now, all tokens that are available for now. It's for action and for charge. Uh, let me go to the settings. I have here a main library owner, uh, for example, a local rental, rental uh, is fine, example. And let me get to the user application and show how it works. Mm, so I'm going to create uh, charge, uh, specify some additional information for stuff, and charge only. Um, so yeah, <laughs> actually, um, I already received um, a notice uh, from the uh, previous part, so I'll stop for now. Uh, here, um, uh, so in checkout application, I I had three items, uh, and here we can see all of them. Interesting times, uh, its title, um, by contributors, and due date, and we have all. Um, notices in a single, uh, all um, uh, items in a single uh, uh, notice. Uh, and let's get back to fee fines. Uh, here I have um, a notice with fee fine, all related information about action type, amount, date, owner, and so on. Um, let me also show um, uh, an action, for example, partial payment. And at once paid fully. And we uh, received the uh, first action uh, paid partially uh, with amount 
10 and date, and the same is for paid fully. Uh, okay, um, seems that is all I was going to demonstrate. If you have questions, please ask. That's awesome. Thank you, Dimitro. You guys have made huge progress. Um, okay, if there are no questions, then let's move on to Thunderjet. Um, Anne-Marie is going to kick it off. So Dennis is in an airplane somewhere over North America right now, so I'm filling in for him. Um, we uh, Thunderjet has done a ton of work in the last couple sprints. Um, there's been a lot of little bug fixes and tweaks, and they are not in the demo. Um, so I would encourage you to go to the, the page that lists the work, and there's a link there to all the things that were closed. Um, so for the demo, Alexi is going to show the organization permissions. We uh, basically did a an, uh, complete overhaul of the UI side of the organization permissions. Yuri is going to show new functionality we added in orders to allow for an approver step before an order can be opened. And then Makita and Andre are going to show um, uh, basically a ton of the sprints were dedicated to invoice uh, app work. And so Makita is going to show uh, changes that were made in the invoices and Andre is going to show the voucher work. And I'm going to shut up now. Uh, yeah, hi guys. Uh, thank you, Anne-Marie. So uh, I want to present uh, improvement in permission model of organization module. Uh, right now we're in snapshot environment uh, and uh, I think we should go to user. Uh, I have one uh, test user created. Uh, uh, so on edit user screen, we can assign user permissions. So uh, we can filter them by uh, module name. Uh, and uh, the main point is that now uh, there are only seven of them and uh, they are more user friendly. So uh, name contains basically uh, the meaning. Uh, this one, I think the basics uh, organizations for you. It allows to just view the list and view settings, um, uh, edit, uh, edit, edit, create, uh, allows to add organization. Uh, so and so on. Uh, previously, uh, there were some uh, like technical uh, permissions, display settings, display module. So we uh, hide, uh, we hidden them. And uh, right now, there are only seven, and uh, I hope they pretty clear. So let's assign um, uh, the basic one, uh, the organization view, save our user, and uh, let's log in with it. As you can see, we have uh, organizations list, no uh, create button, no edit, uh, and uh, we can observe settings for organizations. And we cannot edit them. Uh, so I created a user with separate permission uh, set, uh, organization settings to uh, allow uh, setting uh, addition so we can add categories and that kind of stuff uh, but we still uh, on can only observe organizations uh, so we do have uh, some things like interface and uh, credentials 
uh, with the separate uh, permissions. Uh, and if user has no uh, like view or view and exit credentials permission, he cannot request uh, API to see credentials. So uh, let's log in with previously prepared user. And uh, let's go to the Amazon. And in interfaces section, uh, we can request, and uh, here we have our credentials coming from backend. Uh, so basically, that's it. Uh, the main point that uh, now permissions uh, more user friendly. I hope it's a good improvement. Thank you. Looks great. Thanks, Alexei. Thank you, thank you. We can press it. Okay. Looks like Yuri is up next, according to the slide. Oh, yes. Hello, everyone. I Hello. hope you see my screen. Not yet. Mm. There we go. OK. Uh, Let's start. Mm. Most of the libraries do not require require to approve order before they want to open it. And uh, even if the order is not approved and uh, the checkbox is empty, mm, user still can open the order when click on this button. Uh, but now, we uh, have added the options for the libraries uh, that's required to get an order approved before it can be opened. And uh, this option can be enabled in settings for the orders. Um, and with this option, switch it on. Um, you can now open order. And uh, mm. Okay, uh, and uh, now you cannot open order without approval. You can see no open button in this place. Uh, only approve button. And uh, only when an order is approved, open button is available and uh, checkbox is checked. Um, I think that's all for me. Great, thanks Yuri. Thanks Yuri, and I'll just mention that there's an assumption there's, there's different permissions and different people that are involved and in maybe having created the order and then someone else approving it and opening it. So, um, but Yuri was the all powerful person in the demo. Does it capture who approved it somewhere? Or are there plans for that? Good question. Um, I don't think it does right now. Um, I will double check with Dennis to see if there's plans for it. Okay, very cool. All right, so it looks like Mikita is up next. Uh, yeah, hi guys, I believe you see my screen. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah, okay, so as Anne-Marie mentioned, uh, I'll demo some uh, bunch of uh, changes across invoice model, and I'll start with a uh, small one. Uh, we added the ability to search invoices by accounting code. And yeah, it works uh, pretty small. And uh, let's go to new invoice form. 
So here we change the bit uh, drop down of statuses, uh, and uh, by default uh, we don't display uh, page status, and uh, it it will be available only for uh, approved uh, invoice. Uh, plus we'll have additional actions on uh, detail screen. I'll uh, demo a bit later, and uh, for now let's uh, fill some required field. Uh, adjustment. So here we have uh, adjustments, uh, and we can define a uh, parade uh, of this uh, adjustment by line, by amount, by quantity, or not parated. For example, it can be by line. And uh, uh, relation to total uh, it could be an additional two included in and separate from. Uh, let's use an additional two, and uh, these options uh, are used to calculate uh, subtotal value of invoice line. Uh, and. Uh, Big change uh, for this uh, for invoice form is uh, links and documents section. So at this moment, uh, user can uh, attach uh, documents by link from uh, third-party resource. So just an example, I use our GitHub, but uh, it can be like uh, Amazon S3 or or another uh, storage. Or it can be uh, attached to our server. So we support uh, drag and drop. Yeah, and uh, it was attached uh, all by click button. And uh, let's save this invoice. So here we see uh, the list of our documents uh, separated by type, links, and documents. Uh, and uh, one note, for now we can't download uh, these documents from, uh, from details here, but uh, let's go to edit. Uh, uh, on edit form, we support download of uh, documents. So you see, I, by click, I downloaded previously uh, uploaded document. Uh, and uh, as for adjustment, we created before. Uh, just a note, uh, we don't see any specific buttons here because uh, our invoice is just clean. We don't have any invoice lines. We, we can't approve or pay anything. So let's... Uh, Let's add uh, invoice lines based on PL line. So this one. And uh, here we see invoice uh, line details with uh, adjustment uh, we created for invoice. And uh, uh, based on this uh, adjustment and uh, um, price of uh, order and order line, we have subtotal value. Uh, and let's back to invoice. Uh, we have here approve button, so we don't need to go to edit form. We can just click approve. Let me check uh, this voice line. So it should be fine.
Actually, Samsung run this backend teams. Uh, so and uh, um, yeah, and let's move to uh, the last uh, feature. Uh, we worked together with uh, Splitfire team. Uh, Splitfire implemented uh, uh, backend for text, and uh, Thunderjet uh, implemented UI. So we can uh, assign text. Uh, as we have for uh, another models and uh, the same we can do for invoice uh, invoice lines the same text pane uh, and I'd like to know that uh, we have the same for organizations uh, and uh, that's me, thank you. Thanks, Makita. Looks good. And it looks like we've got one more demo from Thunderjet. Andre, I probably said that Yes. <laughs> okay, I believe you can see my screen. So let's yeah, proceed okay. uh, with uh, invoices. Uh, I will demonstrate uh, the process of um, uh, voucher creation, but before it, I'm going to settings to show that we have um, uh, that uh, we have settings for invoice voucher number. Yes, so we can find it, and uh, <coughs> we can see some inputs like prefix and starting number. We can add prefix for voucher number, and uh, we can. Uh, uh, input uh, the first uh, number that we want. So let's it be 100 and we need to click button reset and we can see that the first number in sequence is 100 and we need to save our settings and let's go to invoice and check uh, the invoice with open status. As Mikita mentioned that uh, only invoice with status open and uh, that has uh, at least one invoice line can be approved. Let's approve it. And, uh, so, okay, let's show another. Invoice, uh, so we can uh, see that uh, status uh, of invoice is approved uh, and uh, we can see a new occasion that named the voucher information and uh, we can see that uh, the total uh, and uh, the total of uh, invoices line is equal and here we can see voucher lines uh, based on uh, invoice lines. Uh, if we need uh, more information, we can uh, click button view voucher and we'll see more, more detailed information and uh, voucher lines uh, are grouped by vendor external account number. I think uh, that's all I have for this demo. Great. All right, Thank thanks so much. This looks amazing. Um, Thunderjet. Great Thank work. You. All right, so FoliJet's next. Also starting off with Anne-Marie. All right, so FoliJet data import, we are um, mostly actually uh, focusing on some back-end work, but working from front to back, um, Sasha is going to uh, show some updates we've made on what we call the choose job screen after files have been uploaded. Igor is going to show some instance mapping updates for publisher index title and subjects, which is work that's done in the back end, but it's it sh uh, displays in the inventory instance. And then Alexi is going to give an update on what's uh, what's the status of the pub sub work, which is all giant back end work. And for that pub sub update, Kate, there's a few slides right after the demo um, oh, list. Okay that we're gonna need you to navigate to. Okay, can do. All right, let's move along. We got a lot to cover still. Are you guys ready? I think it's Sasha's first. Yes, hi. Hi. Um, 
please let me know when you can see my screen. Yeah, you can see it. Great. Um, so today I'm going to show uh, the progress of Choose Shop Profiles screen. Uh, let me start by uploading a few MRC files. So here we have uh, the list of available job profiles and uh, they are filtered by uh, data type uh, uh, field. So uh, here we only display in uh, job profiles with uh, data type mark because uh, this file extension MRC has data type mark. Let me demonstrate it. So here in settings in file extension, MRC file has data type mark and here in this table, all of these jobs are having the same data type. Uh, if we upload, uh, for example, txt file which has delimited data type uh, it it shows uh, us just uh, uh, job profiles of delimited data type if we add a new job profile with uh, delimited data type it will appear in the list on choose job profile screen here and uh, if we don't have any uh, files uploaded, uh, we are showing all available job profiles. And for now on this screen, uh, all uh, this job uh, we are just showing available job profiles, but we cannot uh, assign them yet. So that's it from me. Thank you. Igor. Hello, hello, hello everyone. I'm going to share. Well, I'm sharing. Do you see something? Looks good. Well, uh, my presentation is about Mark to instance mapping. Uh, we made we made improvements and uh, applied fresh updates to the mapping mechanism and we have affected fields. The affected fields are publication, index title and subject headings. So just before demo, I, uh, I have already uploaded mark, mark file using our uh, data import. So instances are created. Let's quickly explore them. Let's go to inventory and let's talk about uh, publication field. So we have we have Arihon instance and uh, uh, here publication field consists of uh, publisher, publisher role, place of publication, and publication date. Let's take a look on the real source of the instance the publisher uh, the publication field is described by the field with uh, 260 and 264 tag number in this case we have 264 and uh, this field uh, is often ends with uh, certain ending punctuation symbols uh, commas uh, semicolons, colons, uh, slashes, white space. And uh, publication field was mapped with ending symbols and we have removed the symbols out of mapping, uh, but only in cases where ending symbols come at the end of subfield. So if we go back, we should now see something uh, at the end, except of uh, periods, brackets, parentheses, uh, quotes, the symbols remain untouched. And uh, in addition, uh, it was no mapping for the role field at all. The role now is 
defined by the second indicator. And if the second indicator equals to one, it means that role is publication. If zero, then uh, production. If two, then distribution. If three, then manufacture. Uh, the first indicator uh, doesn't exist, and the second indicator is one. Uh, okay, next up, let's talk about uh, index title. Uh, the more convenient instance for this is uh, a short guide to the parish church. So, uh, for the index title, we uh, we remove. I would say we we, we skip uh, first symbols depending on the second indicator. So before updates, it was only it was always uh, four letters constantly skipped, but uh, now the number how much symbols to skip at the beginning we take from the second indicator. Uh, the title, uh, the index title is represented by uh, 245 tech. So it should be two in the second indicator. Yes, it is. And in addition, we capitalize this, the uh, first character just to prettify the result outcome uh, expression. Uh, and the last affected field is uh, subject headings. It should be somewhere at the bottom. Yes, for uh, for subject headings, it was uh, numeric characters uh, in mapping fields, and now the rule processor takes only symbolic subfields for subject headings and uh, subject headings is represented by the 6XX tag number, 600, uh, 610, 611, 630, and so on. Here we have uh, 650 and 651, and we just skip all the numeric chart, uh, all the numeric subfields for mapping. So this fields, uh, those uh, words like a fast and OCOC uh, doesn't exist in the result outcome uh, value for subject headings. Well, uh, in next release, we plan to integrate mapping mechanism with seedings page, just, just to be able to interact with seedings uh, for most fields, we should to define field uh, identifier based on what is on the seedings page. There may be uh, ten specific data, sample data, or whatever user put. So the cell about mapping. Thanks for your attention. Thank you, Igor. That looks great. Um, okay, it looks like the last demo from FullyJet is Alexi. And if everybody could just move along quickly, that would be awesome because we've still got uh, seven people who need to show something. So. Okay. Uh, so let me share screen. Do you see it? Yes, we see it. Okay. So there are a couple of slides in the uh, whole presentation. So uh hello to all so for the beginning i want uh, to talk a little about uh, motivation and uh, needs uh, for pop up modules uh, for the folio platform and uh, during the development of data import we were faced with needs to integrate data import modules with other modules and also be able to respond to events and changes in data in uh, different modules so the approach of uh, pops up is uh, provide a messaging system whereby modules uh, publish relevant data and when it's ready for other models to consume and uh, to do their part. 
Um, the event-driven approach is a critical part of data import, but um, I think it will be very helpful for uh, for the platform at all. So there are many cases when event-based approach will be easier, faster, and uh, the advantage of this particular solution is that it fits well with microservices architecture and preserve the independence of uh, modules. So for couple of um, previous sprints, uh, our team worked on implementation of such solution and uh, the pops up model uh, uh, and uh, we do it according to uh, RFC described it in, and presented in this slide uh, the uh, hot link. And um, we want to share the first results, what is done. Uh, so, first of all, finalized a POC for Kafka integration with uh, vertex-based modules. Uh, a Spitfire team uh, um, finished it and uh, the link to Jira for it. Uh, our uh, team for Legit uh, was mostly busy with um, um, designing uh, design it and uh, data model for mod pops up and uh, it's uh, already done. Now all uh, data models and schemas are designed and uh, implemented in it. Also, we finalized a DAO layer for a mod pops up and uh, adding a support of non-tenant schemas in database and also uh, data migration for non-tenant schemas uh, for database. Uh, we use a liquid base approach in mod pops up and uh, it helps us uh, to work with non-tenant tables. Uh, and uh, the, um, let's say the core part of uh, uh, pops up module is done. So we have uh, uh, plans for uh, future sprints. Uh, we want to implement a service layer and uh, Kafka integration according for POC. Uh, also implement um, API for registration of publishers and subscribers uh, and um, development of uh, service for audit uh, this uh, messaging workflow. Um, first, um, uh, and I want to say that uh, we will use uh, the um, uh, mod pops up of, of, in uh, uh, integration with inventory of our application, data import application. And uh, I hope the next quarter was uh, uh, a good for pops up and we uh, finish the core part and start in our integration with uh, even driven approach. So here mm -hmm. you also can find a link to the repository. And uh, I hope uh, that's it. So, if you have some questions, please. Yep, we'll deal with them after, so we yeah. can keep moving. That sounds okay, great. Thank you. Thanks, Alexi. Thanks for the update. All right. So, um, Concord is up next um, with Sergi first. Sergi, are you on? I am. Hello, guys. Uh, Hello. If if you don't mind, it uh, would be better if my colleague Evgeny start because my feature is additional feature to sure. his job. Sure, of course, he can go first. Oh, hi, everybody. Uh, Hello. I will share my screen. Uh, do you see it? Yes, we do. Okay, uh, I will tell you about uh, changes in the circulation rules editor. Before our changes, the circulation rules editor supported only three criteria types on UI, material type, pattern group, and loan type. In scope of the story, as Concord team should provide uh, ability uh, to select institutions, campuses, libraries, and locations. So let's take a look at some of the implemented features. At first, we added the needed data loading and integrated uh, an institution menu. So if I input the letter A or 
select the item institutions in the hint, the rules editor will show uh, the list of institution codes. These hints support uh, the header select institution and subheaders institution. All the menus that, that I will show you today support keyboard and uh, uh, mouse interactions. So uh, let's select an institution. I will create uh, a valid rule to show you that the data replacement work works correctly. Uh, as you can see, uh, there is uh, an institution ED instead of its code uh, in, the, in the request. So it looks like everything works fine. Uh, uh, during the development of this story, we faced the issue that there are a lot of not covered by test uh, code. So we had uh, to cover existing code to be sure that our changes will not break uh, anything in the future and pass uh, sonar cube checks. Uh, also, in the separated story, Concord team provided some stylish refactoring for, for some files to enable ESLint for them. As I know, uh, these changes uh, increased the test coverage percentage of UI circulation model at all and allowed us to speed up our development and. Uh, uh, follow our code conventions. After that, we uh, added uh, the uh, campuses and uh, the libraries menus. So if I select campuses uh, in the hint, the rules editor will show uh, the list of code in institutions codes. And if I select an institution, uh, the hint will uh, show its campuses. Uh, as, as you can see, there is uh, a campus code and uh, a institution and its institution code. So, but if I uh, select uh, the item, only a campus code will be added to the rule input field. Let's check it. The libraries. Uh, menu is very similar to the previous one but there are uh, three sections and the, and the every item of uh, the search section contains uh, a library code and uh, codes of the previous selections also in scope of the separated story uh, we implemented a a backwards moving. Uh, so users can use backspace key or mouse click uh, to, to change uh, their decisions. For example, if I uh, press on a backspace, the interaction is moved to the second sections, section and a library list is empty. So I can change my decision, but if I move it interaction to the first section, uh, the backspace will be applied to the rules, rule input field at all. So this space will be removed. As I mentioned before, uh, I can change my decision using a mouse click. The location menu supports uh, multi-selection and so let's select several items, you can see that the button changes its state uh, and uh, there is a location code and a location name uh, in the every time, uh, oh, sorry, in the every item of this list. So let's press uh, on, on the done button to, to select our locations. You can see that all codes uh, were successfully added to the input field. Uh, despite of the uh, big, big width and the dynamic size of uh, this menu, uh, the menu is placed correctly and uh, always displayed uh, all needed uh, data. Uh, 
finally, uh, the back the back end side, the back end features are under development and. Uh, under review for now, uh, but I think uh, Sergey and also uh, some features like uh, locations, items, filtering, and uh, support of supporting of uh, a special uh, item any uh, un under development uh, either. Uh, but I think uh, Sergey uh, can share uh, some information about our other features. Thank you. Thanks, Yvonne. I know that was a really tough one for Sean and, and the RA SIG to design, so I'm sure it was a challenge to develop. It looks great. Thanks. No. That. Okay. Okay, guys. Uh, can you hear me? Can you uh, see my screen? All's good. Okay. In addition to the functionality that Evgeny demonstrated, I'd like to show one more feature for the rules editor. It's about thermalization, the displayed value that the user entered in the code field. Uh, right now, I'm on a snapshot, uh, follow a snapshot environment, and uh, we already have two uh, libraries in the location hierarchy. One of them, as you can see, has code with this space and uh, non-alphanumeric character inside. Uh, let's go to the rules editor on my local machine where the normalization is turned off right now. This is my local machine and I want to show you how can we add several library code here. For example, we, we can enter this code and this one. And as you can see, uh, it's uh, pretty unclear how many entities we see here. Uh, and now let's go to the follow snapshot environment where we have this functionality already. And here we go to the circulations rules editor. We go into the library level. And when we when we uh, enter this uh, library code, we, s we see that we have uh, two entities here. Uh, and uh, as, as you can notice, the space and the uh, non-alphanumeric character have been replaced by the dashes. Uh, it allows us clearly identify each entity in this line. Uh, this feature works uh, at uh, all levels of the location hierarchy, institutions, uh, campuses, libraries, and locations. Uh, it's uh, all about this feature, and I want uh, to turn uh, to another. Okay, uh, the next functionality uh, I want to show affect many setting pages, uh, such as pattern group, resource type, material type, location step, and others. This is about creating and editing a new line in these pages. Uh, first, I'd like to demo the previous behavior of the new button on my local server. My goodness. Mm -hmm. mm, previous functionality allowed us to uh, create multiple editable lines at once. And uh, if we want to create, if we want, for example, what that? <laughs> Let me reload my page. Okay. 
Uh, when I click the new button, as you can notice, uh, we, we cr created uh, several uh, lines. And for example, if you want to uh, save these lines, as you can see, only one of them is saved. Uh, let's go to uh, the folio snapshot environment. And here, uh, when we click the new button, as you can see, the next line has been created in editing mode. And uh, at the same time, the next button became disabled and we have no ability to create new lines. Uh, also, uh, we have the same behavior when we start editing any item of this table. That's all, for, all from my side. Thank you for your attention. Thanks, Sergi. That looks great. Um, okay, so um, next we have actually a demo from Roman from the LDP team. This is exciting. Roman, are you on? Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, cool. Uh, one second. Okay. All right, so I'm going to uh, demo just the LDP test data uh, utility t that generates test data. Uh, we have t test data all throughout our project. I just did a quick search for Faker, which is a common test data generator um, for dates or last names, cities and stuff. Um, so what's different about this uh, repo is that it generates data um, in a central location for um, all sorts of um, uh, interfaces. Uh, there's about, you can see some, these are some of the supported routes address types, groups, users, uh, and so on. Um, so this project just, uh, you run the command and it, it uh, generates the um, data. Um, the input is uh, this uh, config file uh, where you define a list of paths and how many objects you wanna create for each one. Uh, so 30,000 users, for instance. Um, the output uh, you can see here. Uh, I'm gonna open that up. Um, and then you can see the outputs just as if you had made a request to the, the Folio instance. Um, and the same you know, number of uh, objects come back as you uh, asked for. Um, so for LDP, um, we load this data into a database where we can run um, we can test our, our queries uh, that will generate uh, reports. Um, but in, in a actual Folio instance, you, you, know, you would be able to use your own data. Uh, this is just a utility to generate test data. Uh, the development for this uh, project is basically, there's, there's no more uh, resources for it. Um, so this is all the routes that are supported currently. But if you'd like to use it in your project for some, you know, test, uh, it's there and available. And that's about it. Awesome. Thanks, Roman. It's great to know this is there and also to hear from the reporting team what you guys are up to. Um, okay, cool. So then um, next is Stripes Force uh, with John Coburn. Thanks, Kate. Everybody hear me okay? <clears throat> yep, you sound good. All right, let me uh, get my screen shared up for you. Uh, let's see. All right, folks. Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, some major updates that uh, I've been working on on our uh, on our MCL component. It's our our listing component that's uh, used in a lot of places all through Folio. Uh, it's gone through a pretty major rewrite uh, over the past couple of sprints, and uh, that work just got merged in 
this past sprint. Uh, so the way I'm going to demo some of these differences in its performance uh, or just kind of hop back and forth between our snapshot stable, which is using the old version of this component, and our, our snapshot uh, environment that's using the new one. Uh, so right here I'm viewing the old one uh, in UI users. Uh, I think the last time we had one of these demos, Rasmus showed off some of the cool um, uh, style updates uh, that we made this, uh, you know, better looking uh, Row styling, better looking uh, header styling, etc. Um, so, uh, so you can see here in this old version of the list, uh, you can see there's kind of there's there's a bit of a spacing issue here. Uh, you can see this this first status column, uh, you know, it's 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 a bit wide, uh, and and this was actually due to some of the internal logic that the old MCL was using to to size up its columns and kind of measure things out. Uh, it, you know, it would it would try it if it if it couldn't figure it out for for whatever reason, um, it would just assign it a value, and that's what this particular column ends up with. Uh, so in the new version, uh, which I'll go over to snapshot, you can see our uh, status column is actually nice and tightened up here. Um, there's space enough for the inactive and active statuses to fit. Um, so, so it has a much improved, um, it's a, it's kind of a dynamic, uh, column measuring, uh, that it has to get some accurate column measurements. Uh, there's still a necessity in a lot of places to set the column widths, uh, and that still happens in a lot of places. In some places you might see some, some, uh, I guess some funny looking, um, uh, I won't call them bugs, but just places where it, it, it may need a slight change uh, in order to uh, to look proper. Um, so among some of the other changes uh, that I've uh, I've made to this component, uh, as you can see, the uh, the the scrolling experience of it is is much smoother uh, than what we had before. Um, let's see. I'll actually I actually want to take a look at the inventory application uh, to sort of illustrate this this improvement for you guys. Uh, so inventory has, it, it's a challenging uh, list to render because we have a lot of different, uh, different length titles uh, in it and it can really, uh, can really test uh, the, how, how good the, the display, you know, the, the, the display is on it. Uh, so varying column or varying uh, row heights. Uh, and then, you know, you'll get to a point where, uh, you know, you're scrolling and the experience ends up being kind of bumpy. Like I'm sort of inching along now and you can kind of see a bump. Uh, if I select one of these guys so that I shrink the list down, now you can see it's an it's actually an even bumpier experience as the rows kind of disappear and they're sort of switching out on me and it's kind of crazy. Uh, so that's the old one, and so uh, this is the performance on the new one. We can go into inventory and we'll check it out. I'll pull down the same filter set here. Uh, you have you know so again smoothing scrolly scrolling smoothly rather. Um, you know, so good, good performance there. And we'll shrink it down and we'll look and see. And we no longer have the jumpiness that existed before. So uh, very nice. Uh, it's, it's far more efficient. Uh, it's, it's good React under the hood. Um, and uh, it's, a, it's an overall uh, much better component uh, than it was previously. John, um, John, yes. it's a shout out. Um, mm -hmm. uh, it looks really good and I'm so happy about it. I have just one request. You can see the little icon um, to the left. It is uh, kind of uh, not aligned in the top. Yeah. So it jumps up and down a little bit. We're going to uh, be addressing that in future updates to get these things properly, you know, sorted out and kind of get a lot of the, uh, you know, there's there's still some some aesthetic uh, uh, little yeah. quips, I guess, to kind of get worked out with it. Uh, but yeah, we're you know we're we're going to get uh, issues like that uh, resolved. Okay, uh, thanks so much. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yep. 
Uh, and so just some other details about just a little bit how it works. Now uh, the list is very much more efficient. Uh, you know, before if you were to update a single item, it would have to update all the items uh, that are displayed in the list. Now it will keep all those items, you know, in place and just update just the single one. So it's a massive jump um, in, in optimization and these displays in the UI. And uh, if you guys run into any issues, developers run into any issues when y'all are using it and testing it, please feel free to reach out to me and I can help you help you work through those things. And that's all I got. Thank you very much, Kate. Thank you, John. This looks great. All right, so next up is um, Charlotte with a quick demo for Core Functional. Okay, thank you. You see the screen and hear me well? Yes, looks good. Okay, good. Uh, I will demo um, three uh, smaller uh, issues we have fixed uh, and we have solved for the uh, item record in inventory. So, but I will, uh, so I will start, uh, pull up uh, a record we can take a look at. And I could see from several of the other demos, uh, my usually one is uh, the semantic web has been used and checked out. So I was not able to, to use my favorite but I will use this one instead. Okay, and the nicest one I will start out with, that is the very long sought uh, possibility to copy the barcode in an easy and elegant way. And we have done that. So if you do a, a click on this new icon, then we have copied the barcode into, um, into the, um, the clipboard. Uh, clipboard, yes. <laughs> I was looking for the word. Okay, and uh, I can do uh, a checkout. So I can uh, illustrate for you that uh, it is actually in the clipboard now. I can check out to her. And then I just need to do, use my um, command V and then I have uh, clipped the barcode in here and then I get um, my uh, item record and it's so easy to, to do a checkout. I'm pretty sure most of us have had uh, these uh, cheat lists with uh, possible uh, item barcode uh, um, so it's that was the thing that makes a big difference for sure. Yeah. So that was one thing. Then I will go back again to inventory and I can uh, take a look at one of these records. And then uh, in uh, we have this accordion for condition. And if I go into conditions, a uh, condition, then I here can uh, select uh, my item damage status if example giving my uh, I, my uh, item was in a damaged uh, condition right now we have this select list as um, a hard coded list but we have a story in for uh, having it as um, an edible uh, and uh, customizable uh, settings page uh, it is UIIN 562. I can close without setting, but we, but we will have um, a future uh, possibility uh, added here where it is possible to, to have a, um, a reference table uh, here under items where you can define the different um, damage statuses uh, each library want to use. And then the last thing I will um, talk about is that we had, here you can see now we have the copy number and um, the copy number was, uh, um, yeah, in our first uh, round then we had, um, yeah, uh, implemented as that it was a repeatable. And that is of course 
wrong. It's not a repeatable element. If you have an item, uh, you have a book, then you, of course, have only one copy number for this uh, book. Um, but the thing is, and it is fixed now in the UI, you can only assign one copy number. Uh, but the thing is that in the back end, we still have uh, uh, we still have it as a multiple that you can uh, add multiple copy numbers. So if you are looking into the API, um, uh, then uh, you you probably still can see that, and that leads to that we have. Um, um, gathered um, a, a bit of a list of uh, miscellaneous um, uh, breaking changes, uh, which uh, we have bundled, but uh, we hope as um, soon as possible and hopefully after um, the Q3.2 release that we will be able to um, earmark some time to get these um, breaking changes uh, solved, so we kind of can have, yeah, get it cleaned up, so UI and backend are uh, aligned. Yeah, that was the stories from me. Thanks. Sounds great. Thanks, Charlotte. You're getting lots of plus ones in the chat on the copy barcode feature. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, great. Well, um, that wraps up the demos and gives us some time to talk about the QA update. Um, so I'll turn it over to Anton for that. Uh, hello, everyone. Just let me share my screen in a second. Um, this one. Sure. Okay, can you see this uh, QA update slide? Yes. Okay, I'll be very brief. Uh, so QA dashboard has been updated. Link is on the slide for the Spring 71. Uh, we are still, I understand that we're balancing priorities. I just um, showing you the old coverage for the core modules and you can see that we have a lot of red which is below 60% yellow, so above 60, but below 80, and green is above 80. So still a lot of work uh, has to be done uh, to uh, get the coverage up to 80% for the core portion of the modules. Uh, so if you have any chance to build tests, please um, build those tests. The second thing I would like to point out, this is the open versus closed defects for the past 30 days. So you see that we are lo start losing the battle. We were keeping, uh, keeping, uh, keeping it even, and now we're opening more defects than we are able to close. So um, that means that I would like to ask you if you have any improvements uh, on tightening your acceptance criteria, building more tests for the features that you're working on. I'm not talking about fixing existing bugs, I'm talking about preventing future bugs. So make your process as tight as possible, build more tests, build more coverage, enforce your acceptance criteria to the point that where we reduce number of escape defects that you see on this chart now. So these guys in red, they escaped our process. And the third thing I'd like to tell you about, so the SU all working towards releasing the modules this week. And it means that the bug fest will be ran next week. And we have uh, quite a big change coming for this bug fest because Product owners no longer will be testing, uh, uh, will be primary testers for the bug fest. We were able to recruit 64 librarians from various universities that are interested in implementing Folio at the various time frame next year, two years from now. 
and those people will be now testing for you. So the impact on you that the bugs probably gonna look not as good as um, uh, they, they have been filed by product owners, but uh, on the other hand, they will be um, filed by real users, by real people that in the future will be using the system. So it will be a little bit of a stressful exercise for this bug fest, but uh, I think it's for the, this changes for the better and we can have a um, kind of unbiased feedback from the, uh, from the users because, well, I love product owners, but uh, no matter how, uh, if you work on a feature for a very long time, you become biased and you become, you work, you develop your own way of handling things. And this way I hope we're gonna get fresh eyes on the system. So that's, uh, that's what will be happening uh, next week. We'll be, uh, new people will be testing the uh, testing folio. So, and that's all I have, um, have for you today. Thank you. Thanks, Anton. All right. Well, amazingly, it looks like we've wrapped up in time. Um, we will meet again in about a month. Um, there are some slides here in the deck. Um, if you're interested in what the teams are planning for the next couple sprints, you can come in and take a look. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's really all we need to say, unless there are any last thoughts or questions before we break. Okay. I guess we're good. Thank you so much, everyone. And uh, we'll share the, uh, the links and recordings shortly. Have a great day.